We are going to talk about positions, so come on over, listen in. Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we're going to be talking about from 69 to doggy style. And what does that mean? We are going to be talking about positions. So if you joined me last week and on the last uh, episode of the Pleasure Zone, I was talking about the different slang words that are used to describe different things like different things in sex, not just positions, but uh, all kinds of different sexual acts. So some of these may sound like slang, and they are, in fact, a lot of these things. Doggy style is a slang word. 69 is a slang word. Uh, we're going to be using this language because it's more commonly used. If you are not, if English is not your second language and this is translating, I'd be really curious to hear what are these things called in your language? I'd love to know like, I actually don't even know if these things are called the same in, like, in where my dad's from, <clears throat> which is Serbia. I've never had a conversation about sexual positions with my dad, so I don't even know if these are, if this is terminology that's used even in Serbia, which is a language that I speak, but I I don't speak about sex in Serbian because I speak to my family in Serbian and I so now I don't even know which is funny but maybe I'll go ask some of my cousins who might know more than I do because they married people who uh I think all my cousins actually married Serbians on the one side so they would probably know I just don't because I did not marry a Serbian so I don't have sexy discussions with my husband in Serbian about sex positions <clears throat> but we're going to be talking about these in English and I would love to hear what they're called in other languages. And if they're in like German, please write how things are said because whew, some, some languages throw me for a loop and I do not know how to pronounce them, but I would love to see them because these things entertain the heck out of me. So I'm curious if you've ever wondered what the best sexual positions are, have you tried out everything that you can think of and are like, well, these are all pretty good, but is there anything else? And, you know, how many variations on one thing are there, you know, because there you could be thinking, well, missionary is missionary, but there are variations within missionary. So you can make missionary pretty hot. It, it doesn't have to just be where, you know, you got one person, you got usually with missionary, we're going to just do a reference to heterosexual relationships for now. But usually the well, actually, we'll call it the receiver and the giver. That might actually be better than going uh, heterosexual on this. So if you're the receiver, you're on the bottom. If you're the giver, you're on top. <clears throat> and in normal missionary, you would just kind of be lying there on your back. Your legs will probably be sort of bent and access to penetration will be from the top um, going in. There won't be necessarily a lot of like truly missionary, there isn't a lot of uh, motion happening on the receiver's end. Uh, you can get way more fun with that, get some rocking and rolling of the hips happening. You can add things to missionary hips, doing some other things, even slightly sh changing the angle of your legs can create a whole new sensation. So when we're talking about positions and why am I talking about these things is because I love talking about pleasure and sex and I've been doing it for years. This is almost 10 years I've been talking on the, the pleasure zone about 
body, sex, pleasure from all kinds of different perspectives. Also, I work with people in their lives, in their personal lives, uh, in their relationships on having more pleasure, as well as working with them on their relationships. And I also work with people on health. So I'm a holistic health practitioner, as well as a sex and intimacy coach. And what I have found most of the time is that people tend to have health issues and do not have a lot of pleasure. Now, I find they tend to go hand in hand, especially with the people who have come to me over the years or they have relationship issues that are affecting their health. So as a result of being a holistic health practitioner and having a whole bunch of people come to me who had uh, relationship issues as well as sex and intimacy issues, I ended up getting trained as a uh, sex and intimacy coach as well as a relationship coach. That's a side note. So why are we talking about positions? Well, one of the things that some people find uh, in relationship is they get bored of the positions that they're experiencing or that they're, you know, maybe they're feeling limited by the mobility of their partner. You know, if you if you have mobility issues, then you might think that sex is going to be limited. Although years back, seven or eight years ago, I did an interview with someone. It was called Sex on Wheels. It was with a lady that I know who uh, had a car accident in her early 20s and is a paraplegic. And so we talked about all the different options that they use in order to have fun. And also last year uh, in 2023 I or 2022, maybe it was, I had a conversation with uh, a friend of mine as well. And we talked about, um, we heard, uh, yeah, who did I, anyway, we were talking last year about um, using different therapy units to make sex a little bit easier. So I will look up that episode and get that to you guys. So talking about from 69 to doggy style, we're going to be talking about these different positions. And as I was saying, missionary, is probably one of the standard positions that we're talking about. You have the receiver on the bottom lying down on their back and you have the giver on top facing the receiver. So it's a face-to-face interaction. Now, what I really wanted to do was use some toys that we have from a miniature dollhouse. However, I was not given permission to bring the toys on here to use them (laughs) as props darn it so you're gonna need to use your imagination close your eyes sit back listen in feel the positions and hope your body can get and understand what these are and especially if some of them are unique that you haven't heard before then it may take a little bit of imagination if you're listening in if you are watching i will try my best to give uh explanations using my hands um because I also don't want to be flashing pictures of these things, uh, although I have reference materials that I can do that. I could do that. I just don't know if um, what the algorithms will do to me if I do that. Will I get shut down? And I don't want to get shut down. So I will try and be as descriptive as possible. Hope that turns you on. Hope it gets you excited and gives you some ideas. So some of the books I'll be referencing today, uh, there's a really fun one called Ride'em Cowboy. Ride em Cowgirl by Dr. Sadie Allison called Sex The Ride em Cowgirl Sex Position Secrets for Better Bucking. So that is one. And then another one that I have on hand, because a lot of books that I have are actually on, they are on um audio, so I can't really show them to you and they don't have pictures. They are all descriptive. I really love audiobooks and most most of my um most of my study materials are in audio. However, I am a big fan too of all things with pictures, which I can't show you guys, but another fun one is if you can get any reference materials on the Kama Sutra, they have, they're going to have great uh, pictures, pictorials, especially if they're, it's a modern Kama Sutra, you're going to have actual pictures in there. These books you can get nowadays, you can get them pretty much anywhere you can get them at like indigo you can get them at like any of your major bookstores as well as amazon Um, back in the day you could only get these at specialty shops and so 
I think my very first one, I had to go to like a specialty sex store to get a specialty sex book. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know if they were actually available in other places, but anyway, now they are. So it's out there in the world. So you can get original Kama Sutras to look at pictures, not original, sorry. That's, you can get uh, what would be depictions of the original Kama Sutra with, it would be more drawings that are involved rather than humans in photographs. So uh, the drawings are really incredible. In the Kama Sutra, when you do look at some of the the original depictions, some of the leg positions and things look a little confusing or uh, impossible even. So you have to kind of interpret what those bodies are doing. And because a lot of the bodies don't even do the positions that are drawn in there, I think, you know, they did their best, especially, I think that was written in the 14th century. I have to double check. Uh, so you got the Kama Sutra, you've got also references in um, the art of the art of sex is a really another good book that also has great pictures in it that have positions that you can use as references as well. And there are names to all of these positions. Each culture has named them in their own way. And, and for today, we we're not going to be using the Kama Sutra names because I am going to just stick with the names that have been translated to English from different uh, reference materials so that everybody can understand uh, in English what we're talking about. Yeah, so there are some really cool references, names, words, and descriptions in the Kama different Kama Sutras. Look them up. So the one that I was showing you there, if you were looking on, on a video, the modern Kama Sutra, this one here is by Kamini and Kirk Thomas. It's the ultimate guide to the secrets of erotic pleasure. Great, great pictures in there. Um, have attempted some, some positions in there. They actually rate them, which is very cool. They will rate how difficult they are. And they also give you descriptions on how to, how to um, actually do them, which is great. It's a great guide. It's a great visual guide. And having having these references is really helpful so <clears throat> what um what i like to have is all those visuals i think it's really helpful so even though a lot of the reference books like i was saying that i use uh, in studying for sex are usually they don't usually have pictures in them because they're on audio but things like these with positions it's really helpful to have uh, a visual to look at. So some of the things to consider with positions is ac access, like access to whatever uh, body part needs the access. Are you accessing for penetration? Are you accessing for stroking? Um, what body parts do you want to be able to access? Uh, so it's really good to look at what are we trying to access? What's the, what's the level of accessibility? say for vaginal penetration, what's the level of accessibility from a certain angle? What's the level of accessibility for anal penetration, for oral penetration, for you wanna be able to have vaginal penetration plus stimulate breasts, what's your best position, right? So there's lots of things to consider when looking at, at positions and what works for you and what works for your partner, what they really enjoy too. So what they enjoy gifting, what they enjoy receiving, we also want to look at friction levels because everybody needs a little friction. Lubrication is fantastic. And definitely for anal sex, lubrication, you just can't have enough of it. Like just get that lube and just keep it rocking. However, sometimes a little friction uh, with vaginal penetration can be really good. So again, depending on the person, you have to know and have conversation with your partner. If they need more lube, bring on the stimulation that brings up the lube, if they need to have lube added, then definitely add in lube. So some things to consider there. So we've got accessibility, we've got friction, we've got um, location. There, There's just like, uh, also your capacity to be able to do the position, right? So if you've got, um, 
if you've got, like I was saying earlier, if you have some mobility issues, then you might not be able to do all the positions that you really would like to do. But then again, you can always bring in things, uh, support systems that can maybe help you do that, different lifts and things that can help you do that. So good stuff. I don't even know how 15 minutes just passed me blabbing about books and things and stuff like that, but stick around. We are going to be diving into some really fun positions. We're going to kind of keep it to the six, kind of six main, five or six main positions, but there are multiple variations within each position. So it's, it's a lot more fun than it sounds. Stick around. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Just as we were going to commercial break, I thought, oh, I'm just going to like check in a little reference to find some fun names for you guys to share with you uh, some of the different names of different mis missionary positions. So we're going to start with missionary because it's one of the most common and it's generally one of the most acceptable positions, even for people who are shy about sex. Generally, it, one of the positions that people are comfortable with is missionary style positions. So in the regular missionary position, you have, again, like I was saying, the receiver is on the bottom and the giver is on the top. So this can be in all variations that you can imagine, right? So whether you whatever gender you identify as, you can be the receiver on the bottom and whatever gender you identify as, you can be the giver on top. Sometimes some tools and fun things like strap-ons can be involved to become the giver and it doesn't really matter. We're just going to keep it as giver and receiver for now. So the receiver is being penetrated is what we're com where I'm coming from. <clears throat> so this is the best way I can figure to keep it as neutral and as inclusive as possible. Because these positions are available literally to anybody who can physically do that. Like if you can, if you're comfortable, if your body's not in stress or pain doing these positions and you can do it, awesome. It doesn't matter what gender you are. And absolutely, you can play with strap-ons and other things. You can, doesn't have to involve penetrating a vagina. You can penetrate an anus. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to have some fun with moving on from the regular missionary to something called the nutcracker. Now, the nutcracker is like missionary. However, the receiver is turned on the side and the giver is kneeling on their knees. So you're probably going to be in a bed because the position for this would be uncomfortable on a floor unless you have 
like mats or something to keep your knees comfortable. So the giver is kneeling. I really wish I could show you guys pictures. The giver is kneeling and uh, the receiver is on their side and leaning kind of like sideways uh, like on the, as if they are on their side, but their back is kind of leaning back, just the leg they're turned to the side. This is a great actually twist to uncrack your, like to crack your back, to stretch your back. Like sex can be amazing for not just like having orgasms, but it can also be amazing if you can get in certain positions, you can have a really good workout and a good stretch as well. So one of the fun things for this position is that because the giver is more in a kneeling position and they have they have more um, stability, they can lean on their legs and they can also do things like they can fondle the receivers, anything like the receiver's nipples or play with other body parts, maybe the clitoris, maybe a penis, whatever it happens to be. You know, you can stroke each other's hair also in this position, it's a little bit tricky to, to kiss each other, but you can definitely look at each other and have a very intense look in each other's eyes. So this one's called the nutcracker. For those of you who are curious what that looks like, I bet if you go and Google nutcracker sex position, because otherwise you're going to get like the nutcracker as everything else you can imagine, um, like buying nutcrackers off of Amazon or uh, movies or ballets and things like that. <clears throat> so missionaries in general are where people are facing each other. And we have another one called a little on the side where this one can be tricky uh, in certain positions. Like you're lean, you're actually facing each other. Now it's helpful if the giver is a little bit lower down than the receiver. So that insertion into any uh, orifice can be a lot easier. This one, I personally don't really enjoy it. I find it really awkward because it's just, um, you have to like maneuver your body in a way and you don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of like movement available because you're both on your side and you're, it's in an awkward position. So that one is not one of my top favorites, but it it's lovely for cuddling. It's also, it's like a lovely position for cuddling. Although I love, love spooning. I find it far more comfortable. So spooning is where, for those of you who don't know what spooning is, is where you have, you're lying on your side and then your partner's uh, stomach or their, the front of their body touches the back of your body or vice versa. So you're back to front rather than front to front. So front to front can be very awkward. Like even if you are flexible and you can move your legs around and put them in certain positions. Um, it, it can just be a little awkward. I don't know. It's not my favorite. So it's there. It's an option. Again, do what works for you. If you love that one, good on you. Like I find because I'm like six feet tall, I'm, I got a really big body and it doesn't really work for me when I'm that tall, but I think smaller bodies might have an easier time of it. Um, easier to maneuver and easier to move and have some have some good times with that so there's another one called the plow now this one is this one is helpful if you hoist the bum up so whoever's receiving on the bottom if you can have your bum elevated either with several pillows or you can elevate it you can actually go sex shops carry these really cool bolst bolsters that you can put under your body you can make your own bolsters there are yet like also yoga bolsters you can use pool noodles you can use a lot of different things that can hoist your bum up so that you're in a little different position and the plow can be great um if you are hoisted then the the giver can actually hold you from underneath, which can be nice. They can also put their hands up, you know, beside your head. If you're the receiver, they can put their hands up or on the, wherever on a position on the, the ground <clears throat> or on the bed so that they have more stability as well. Um, and they will be having their legs open kind of like a frog. Like if you've ever noticed how frogs have like their legs open, 
to the side. And so it takes a little flexibility and flexibility of the hips. Um, and the receiver is wide open, legs spread eagle. Everything's like super wide open and coming in from a front angle. The giver comes in from the front. So we got the giver coming in from the front and the receiver is, let's see if I can do this as a, uh, as a visual hand wise. So it's kind of coming in this kind of angle, uh, person's lying down their butt is hoist. So the butt, if you're looking on video is my, my wrist and it, so it's hoisted and then the two bodies can come together. Like, so yeah, I, I would love to have toys for this. Um, little peoples, maybe I'll just one, I'll just invest in some little peoples one day that are like those art peoples that, you know, people buy so they can draw figures. Maybe I need those. That could be a great, uh, a great addition to the show. Just don't know what I'm allowed to show without getting canceled. <clears throat> All right. So another forward position is where it's called the jelly roll. And the jelly roll is, again, the giver is on their knees. Um, and it's really important that you can be comfortable when you're in, on your knees. And the receiver is on their back with their legs kind of just to the side. Um, quite comfortable, actually. Or, and you can also have it where your legs are just fully open. You're lying, the receiver is lying down. The giver is kneeling. <clears throat> they don't necessarily have anything hoisting their butt up on this one, but more like the giver can just hold the hips and, and bring them in closer. So we're gonna move on. There's a lot of different variations of missionary, like there's the mission. Um, so that's when the legs go Basically, the receiver's body is folded in half and legs go up to, so your li receiver's lying on their back and legs, legs go right up to their body and then the giver comes in from this angle. So that is, uh, that's deep mission. That one can, depending on placement of body parts and things, that one Unless you have a clitoris that's really closely located to your vaginal opening, you're only going to feel uh, vaginal, like the vaginal sensation. So for those of you who are clitorally more, clitor have, have more or enjoy more clitoral stimulation than vaginal stimulation, that one will kind of get, it'll feel good probably. Um, however, you're not going to necessarily feel any kind of stimulation clitorally unless you're stimulating yourself which absolutely you can do and that position can be really good for also if you're using any of the um like the bullet vibrators that are connected to c rings we'll just call them c rings on here uh so c ring goes on the giver and then the the uh, bullet can go on the clitoris if some of these positions, adding some of those toys can be really helpful because you're not going to get the clitoral stimulation if your clitoris is a little further away from the opening of uh, the vagina, if if you are having a body that has a, a vulva. So we got, now we're going to move on to the next positions, which are the most common, which are doggy style. And there are so many variations of doggy style. I know most people just think, oh yeah, I just bend over and that's it. Well, there's like bend over standing up, there's bending over furniture, there's bending over where your head goes below your hips, there's bending over on your knees, there's bending over kind of squatting, there's bending over like as if you are in child's pose and <clears throat> your bum might be elevated, but in child's pose, you might have it where the giver is also on their knees and your, you know, the receivers in child's pose, or you might be using props like beds or um, tables or chairs or something so that you can get at different angles and from behind. So one of the great things about doggy style is that usually you have the giver is hands-free, like they have their hands available and as a receiver, depending on the position, and you might also have your hands free. So 
this is great. I mean, it, depending on what bodies are coming together, you might be able to, I mean, if your partner enjoys having their nipples stimulated, no matter what gender they are, then you have access to stimulate. The giver has access to stimulate nipples in doggy style for the receiver. And also the giver has access to stimulate, say, if, if there's, um, if it's doggy style anal penetration uh, and the, the receiver has a penis, then you can also stimulate the penis simultaneously with like, with masturbation. Um, and then if it's, you know, the giver is penetrating a body with a vulva, vagina, then you could stimulate the clitoris. So either way, you got hands free that you can do a lot with. Sometimes too, it might not even be stimulating those body parts. It could be hand, you could be really into the energetics of sex and putting your hands on the person's lower spine, um, kind of keeping the energy geared towards their genitals. Maybe you'll put one near where their heart chakra would be on their back, kind of between their, their, um, their shoulder blades and then one down by the bottom of the base of their spine, kind of keeping that energy moving. You also would may be really into some kinky things where you want to be able to pull their hair. And so from behind and all these things, again, they need to have consent, right? We know that the consent is really important. All right. Somehow we're already in the next segment. Um, obviously, I like talking about positions. My brain goes wild. My imagination goes wild. We'll probably talk about some more doggy styles and some other positions when we come back. Well, I know we're going to talk about other positions when we come back. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. 
Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we're talking about positions from 69 to missionary to ride em cowgirl to you name it. And right now, we've been, as just before break, we were talking about doggy style and all the variations thereof of doggy style. Whether you're doing the regular doggy style where um, you're both kneeling down on a bed uh, and the receivers got their head down low and their bum up high at, right at the access um, level. This is great for accessing body parts of all kinds for stimulating and having all kinds of fun. Then there's some other names I want to share with you guys, like the French Poodle. And the French Poodle is also something that can be done generally both of you on your knees and um more like a little bit more raised so that instead of having the receiver's head down like on a pillow or on the mattress uh they're more up um and just like the giver same kind of position and then we've got one called the plush puppy and the plush puppy is is fun actually i know i've done it i've well i've done most of these frankly i'm talking about the ones i've done uh so plush puppy this one's convenient to have some furniture or say if you have like a bed or a a, uh, a bed that has a, like a head, like a, what's it called? The, the head thing, the headboard on your bed. So you have something, the receiver has something to hold on to. You might also have a bedroom where you have a window just above your bed and you can hold on to the windowsill. Just saying that happens too. But <laughs> there's other positions you can do that on a sofa to um, you want to have something to kind of hold onto either the wall or something that you can like grasp. It's a little bit helpful and to be able to lean over uh, is helpful as well. And this is also both on the knees, kind of like the French poodle, but it's uh, more upright. And it, and I find what I like in doggy style is I like to do, so there's a name for it. It's called the uh, three-legged fox and, or, the three-legged fox and bottoms up, throw them together. So the three-legged fox actually involves having your, your, uh, the receiver's legs, the closer together they are, the more friction you're going to get. And um, it can be also a lot easier to, so the, the friction will help you create orgasm a lot faster, but also what it can do is stimulate things in a different way. So what happens is the receiver has their legs close together and the giver will usually have their legs on the outside. Um, but if if it's too much for balance for the, for the receiver to have their legs right together, then you can always put them close to each other so that the legs of the receiver and the giver are kind of touching, but quite close together that's helpful. Um, the penetration, sometimes it's easier to get the penetration going first and then move your legs closer together just to have access. So those are some helpful tools and tips. I find that doggy style penetration can be sometimes the easiest. I, I have like some flesh going on down in my vulva. So sometimes you got to like move things out of the way to get to, to the entry point, not like a porn star that has like all the, everything seems like flat and open. Like I got to like kind of come in there. Like you got to find your way in. So <clears throat> although I've, I've been told that's rather sexy. So I'm just going with it. It's a full vulva. That's what I've got. Um, and then we've got happy crab. So happy crab is, Basically, the receiver is flat on their face on, you know, you're going to want pillows and, and some support underneath the body and um, legs are bent and you're holding your legs. So you're on your tummy holding your legs. It's basically you're doing some yoga positions and being penetrated simultaneously. And if you like yoga, how fantastic, right? It's, it's a really great way to be able to uh, keep the stimulation going. So... I think I actually missed break. Um, did I did I miss break? What did I just do? No, I didn't. Okay, I'm I got lost there for a second. Woo. 
I was told that today is actually this crazy timeline shift and no kidding, I'm feeling it and I'm just trying to keep on track. Where am I? What am I doing? Awesome. So there are, uh, there are, I don't even know guys, there's so many positions. Basically, if you can get your body into the position, then you've got a position and always consider is the position pleasurable or are you just doing it to see if you are flexible enough, if you are like an acrobat, the, the position should be pleasurable. It can be interesting, but definitely make sure it's pleasurable because trying sometimes trying some of these positions that seem a little interesting or unique and you go to try them and you're like, well, that doesn't really work. So try something else. It's always fun to try it. And if it doesn't work, just get on and get into something else. So there's some other from behind ones where uh, the receiver is fully spread eagle. Uh, and so legs wide open. This one's really helpful to do on a bed um, or on a sofa too, wherever they're, well, it's helpful if it's the right height for accessing um, any orifice that you're going to access. So for penetration. So the giver is standing the receiver is kneeling on the bed and easy access to any orifice as well as easy access. The hands are free for the giver so they can do all kinds of stimulation of different body parts. They can spank the bum. It's actually called red cheeks because you can spank the bum pretty good from that position. There's a super sophisticated one called the Arc de Triomphe. Uh, it involves lots of pillows. So the receiver is face down, pillows under the um, the hips, pillows also under the arms, um, the stomach drops, legs go up in the air, for, and that's for the receiver. And the giver is given it like normal uh, doggy style, given it uh, on these hands kind of used as support. So... Um, I hadn't heard that term Arc de Triomphe before, <laughs> but I, this position is actually really comfortable. I just didn't know what the name was. So then we've also got ones that are um, from from like against a wall. Uh, so this would be against a wall or anywhere, window, whatever's fun for you. And <laughs> the receiver is up against the wall buttocks back, at easy accessible to penetration of anus or vagina. And um, that one can be super comfortable too. It's helpful that the in this case, that as the, re the receiver needs to be at, at a good height for the giver to be able to enter. So say you're like five feet tall and your partner, you're five feet tall and you're the receiver and your partner is like six foot five and is the giver, this can get really awkward because they have to squat down really far. So you might need to stand on something like a stool or a chair to get in position to make it make things a lot easier and more comfortable because squatting a really deep squat for a really long time can create cramps unless you're super flexible which, you know, if you're into sex Olympics and you've already been working those muscles forever and you can do that, good for you, go for it. <clears throat> so we've got, uh, yeah. So the next ones we're gonna be talking about are gonna be the ride and cowgirl position. So before we get into that, I would just like you guys to kind of take a, uh, like a, an inventory in your life and look at what are some of the positions that have really worked for you and what was it about them that worked for you? Sometimes you'll be with one partner and a position doesn't work for you at all, but with another partner, it does. So sometimes it has to do with the body parts and how they fit together. Sometimes it has to do with the capacity of the person as a lover, sustainability of how um, how they can perform or how much they can perform, how much somebody can receive. So there are some factors that come into play that you might think, well, I don't like that position, but 
I would encourage you that if you've tried a position before and you didn't like it with one partner, that doesn't mean that it's going to be the same with another one. So try again. And if it's really bad, then don't, you know, don't do it. If you can't even get in the position and feel anything, then just say to your partner, let's try something else. The cool thing would be to do is to get one of these books, like the book called Ride em Cowgirl, or the Kama Sutra, or any one of the Tantra books, although Tantra is a study, and it does, it is a little bit more, actually, the Kama Sutra is a study as well, but you can reference it for, for positions. Uh, you can use these things as references, if you're out of ideas, if you feel frustrated. Another thing you can use these kinds of books for is that they can just add a lot of fun and ideas, right? If you're like, oh, yeah, we've been doing the same five for, there's like, there's like a joke that every guy's got their staple five. Um, but you can see that there are nuances and differences, even within like missionary, there are so many nuances and differences that can be enjoyed, different ways of moving your body around uh, to get a better fit, to get better access, to get better uh, depth of penetration going on. All those things are fantastic to explore. So we're going to be talking about the Rydum Cowgirl position, which is a other really common position. Um, it's called Rydum Cowgirl, but it really has to do with whoever the receiver is, is on top. So you can just call it Rydum Receiver for now. And we'll talk about that after uh, this commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspire Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who are listening to this show and you're wondering... You know, how do, I don't, you know, you're thinking, how do I do these positions? What are they? I don't understand. I need uh, like a better description. I need to see some visuals. So some of the things you can do is you can Google these positions. You'll probably find images. Um, if you need assistance, if you need to learn how to have a conversation with your partner about these positions, I'm happy to gift you 15 minutes of my time. Just go over to my website, melitsayelanich.com. And you can book a free consultation with me and we can get on and figure out how you can have a conversation about some of these positions. Some of the positions may be positions that your partner really likes and you don't like. Um, and there may be some room for a negotiation and there are some positions you might really be really wanting to try and you don't know how to ask for because you maybe you feel awkward conversation communication is so important. And so is consent. So if we can have, a conversation about how to get you back on track and get you into the pleasure zone, let me know. Definitely connect with me and um, and we can spend some time together. Also, if you are new to this uh, show and you're enjoying it and you happen to be listening to it on one of the many 400 different platforms that you can listen to it on, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, wherever that's possible. Share it with friends. I love when people do that. I, I love when the network, the Inspired Choices Network, sends me messages to say that people are sharing my shows. That excites 
me so much. You have no idea. And I'm so grateful when I get those messages. It's so great to see. So <clears throat> talking about riding them cowgirl. Now, these shows are also fun because I know that some of these are watched via video, but I also know that some people are listening to them. So being able to describe these positions is quite fun, especially because I don't know if I'm allowed to show visuals on these. So um, I don't think we have the over 18 rating on this today. So I don't know if we do. Maybe we do. So we've got our basic cowgirl, which is Again, we're just going to call it the basic receiver. I'm just going to rename them for this point um, of, of uh, discussion. So the person on the bottom and and the person on the bottom in this point is is in a way the giver sort of. So because the person on the bottom has the is the penetrator. So in that way, we kind of refer to them as the giver, although the person on top who is the receiver is doing a lot more action, um, actually doing a lot more activity. So you got your basic cowgirl, the, the giver is actually on the bottom, the receiver's on top and the receiver can be on their knees. And one of the things that is important is that whoever's on the bottom and penetrating. So if you have, um, if you're using dildos, you don't have to be concerned about anything like, um, like if you're using strap-ons, you don't have to be concerned about whether there's erection or not. But if you are um, working with a body that has a penis, that has an erection or a slight erection, you want to get the erection to be pretty hard before you go and ride them. One of the things you don't want to do is get into a lot of action, have the penis slip out. And then as you're riding, you might get like very... Uh, enthusiastic and you can go down on that penis in a funny angle you can actually create you can break a penis well it's not a bone but you can create scar tissue in it we've talked about that on the shows about penile pain <clears throat> so you want to be very aware of the penis being as uh, if it's a if it's a real life penis you want to make sure that it's not going to be hurt right so you know even when you're in the throes of enthusiasm you want to make sure that you aren't going to land on that do anything crazy create some pain so you can do this in a chair you can ride them cowgirl where the person who can penetrate is sitting uh, down on the chair and then the receiver sits on top you can do this in so many different ways where you're lying down there are other ride and cowgirls that can be like mostly like, you know, sitting and lying down are the main ones, but also where it looks like you're having doggy style, but you're kind of not um, called the backfire position. So you can imagine that. And, you know, then we've got other ones where there you where you can be facing each other and the giver is no, the receiver is on top facing the giver and or the receiver is facing away from the giver. So different um, positions like that, you can be on your uh, feet where you can actually do squats. Again, if you're squatting on a like a human penis, you got to make sure that you're going to actually get in the penetrate it properly so that you're not going to create any pain. Uh, or land on it with all your weight and, and crack or oh, the pain. I can't even imagine. So try not to do that. <laughs> what I do encourage you to do is go out and have lots of fun from 69 to missionary. So there are so many more positions, guys. I encourage you to go out, get some books, look them over. Try out 69 though, uh, as well, because as, as this is part of the title, what is that for those of you who don't know is when you're having mutual oral sex simultaneously. So somebody is on the bottom, somebody is on the top, and you're both giving oral sex to each other. One of, I think both positions can be easy. I think both positions can be easy for uh, no matter what your gender is. So just get in a position that's comfy for you. You can do 69s lying down. You can do them if you're, if you're 
kind of athletic. You can even do them um, on things like on a sofa. That's pretty sophisticated. So do what's comfortable, consider access, accessibility, consider penetration uh, level, as well as friction level and enjoyment and connection. Those are all key for all your positions. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your